In the return to learn this morning, Columbia Public Schools new superintendent, Dr. Brian Yearwood, is getting ready for this school year. And this morning, he's actually joining us live in studio to talk about the district. Thank you so much for being on with us this morning, Dr. Yearwood. Sure, thank you. So first, can you tell us a bit about yourself and your role? Sure. Um, again, I've been in education for 31 years. Um, very, very exciting years, starting off as a teacher coach, assistant principal, principal, and then assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction. Um, in my current district in Maynard, Texas, I'm now the chief operations officer in charge of a $286 million bond project and, you know, um, being able to bridge a gap between, between construction buildings and education. Um, it has been quite a learning experience, but I was very excited. Yeah, and how has the transition been into this role, and have there been any challenges with that? Um, well, the, the, the transition has been great, I have to say, um, because of, number one, the legacy that Dr. Steepleman has left behind. has made it very, very easy to transition, and they're, they're very committed, uh, dedicated individuals out there, both internally in our school district and outside, and, and they are very, very welcoming, and, and we all have one thing in common, the, the interests of our scholars, and, it, and that has made my transition very simple. That's great to hear. And are there any new changes that families or students should expect as they head into this school year with you in the new role of superintendent? Um, the continued drive for excellence. Um, one, I'm, I'm very big on our scholars achieving all that they can, and I, I, continue, I will continue to push. Um, uh, one small example, uh, we have a, a presidential scholar um, from Hickman High School. Well, I want to see more, mm -hmm. and, and you know, he's setting the bar for us. I want to see us have greater achievements in the academic um, uh, world. We have several national merit uh, semifinalists. We have three from uh, Rockbridge. I want to see more. Mm -hmm. I want to see our scholars achieving greater and greater things, and, and that's where my push will come in. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. And now I wanted to turn to the COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, that's on a lot of people's minds. And the district actually announced a return to masks and those new contact tracing and quarantine protocols last week, and those started Monday. Why did the district make those changes, and how are they going so far? Yes, well, um, of course, our number one priority is to keep our scholars safe, keep our staff safe, and as we see the rise in our COVID cases, we wanted to mitigate that, make sure that our school district was not a part of uh, having that spread. So we went to mass to be able to uh, protect those that come into our doors every day, our young scholars. And as you know, those under 12 have no protection. They, they can't be vaccinated. So we went to, man, uh, we, we call it, we strongly recommended masks for them. And I have to say, it, it has been great. Uh, parents are complying, our scholars are coming to school with their masks, and they're learning during the summer. Um, or, or also, one of our biggest uh, uh, hurdles was uh, quarantining due to contact tracing. Now, if a scholar wears a mask, they no longer have to quarantine, so they're in seat, they're not missing 10 days of school, and that's what we want. We want our mm -hmm. scholars in school every day, excited, ready to learn. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Have you received any pushback from these new measures? Um, minimal, I would say, <laughs> minimal. Um, of course, you know, in, in every uh, change initiative, there will be some dissension, which is okay. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. But uh, as long as everyone understands that we're not just doing this just because. We're doing this because we want our scholars to be safe and we will ensure we take every measure and, and take advice not only within our schools but from our medical professionals locally from the CDC that came out with a report yesterday mm -hmm. that says wear your mask. And we're doing just that. Yeah, definitely. Now, as of this morning, we actually checked the CPS COVID tracker. Um, 186 students are out for quarantine or isolation, and 161 of them are at the elementary level, which you kind of talked about. It's hard for the students under 12 because they aren't eligible for the vaccines yet. When you go to return for this fall, are you expecting, what are you expecting it to look like as we continue to deal with this surge in cases and yes. the Delta variant a lot in Missouri? Yes, well, you know, it, it is somewhat hard to predict because, you know, the, the, the surges that we see, hopefully we can mitigate them and bring them down. And, you know, we are about a month, we start, our first day of class starts on August the 24th. Um, we, will, we will track this and we'll monitor. And based upon the data that we see and also with our collaboration with our medical uh, professionals locally here that have been very, very, I call it uh, supportive and, and commu uh, communicate with us. Um, 
we will then take measures accordingly. So it's, it's somewhat difficult to predict, but what, whichever decision we make, whatever decision we make, we will be making it in the best interests of our scholars. That will be number one. So first, before we jump into the fall return, could you kind of run us through what those changes are this week with the mask requirements as well as quarantine and isolations? Yes, certainly, yes. So um, we've implemented the um, process for masking where 11-year-olds and younger must wear masks. It's mandated, and that's for their protection. 12-year-olds and older, those that are um, unvaccinated, we ask to wear a mask. It's, it's um, strongly encouraged, but we want to ensure that those 11-year-olds and younger that have, because there are no vaccines available for them, we must ensure their protection. So they're mandated with masks. Yeah, and as you just mentioned, you definitely are dealing with the tale of two worlds here. I mean, elementary is so much different than the middle and high school levels just because of the availability of vaccinations. Mm -hmm. Will elementary education look different this fall than it will at the middle or high school levels? It, it, it will look different compared to the year of, of our pandemic of COVID. We're trying to bring our scholars back and, and have them in seat so they can uh, have a normal, as normal as possible learning process. So we're taking measures to ensure that our, our scholars are with us day in and day out and, and that they're safe. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And you just talked about the measures you are taking. What is the district doing to prepare for the fall return? So right now we're looking at our, our, our plans that, we've ha that we had in the past. We're looking to see where our changes are needed. Um, you know, we, we want to make sure that everything is driven by the spread and we want to be able to not be a contributing factor to that. Um, we are encouraging uh, our staff members to be vaccinated as much as possible. 12 years and older, our scholars, we're encouraging those that can to be vaccinated um, and, and to ensure that, again, we're following the protocols with masks, with hand washing, with uh, making sure that we are disinfecting the, the rooms and, and just practicing just proper, uh, what do you call it, good practices so that we can continue the process of being safe. Because number one, if our scholars aren't in school, the educational process slows down or in some cases stops. We don't want that. We don't want that. Yeah, and now one last question. We wanted to talk a little bit about problems last year with staffing shortages and substitute teachers or also bus drivers. How are we looking going into the fall this year with yes. that? Um, we are continuing to, to struggle in those areas in terms of bus drivers, mm -hmm. in terms of substitutes. We are in need of substitutes. So if there's anyone out there that can meet our substitute guidelines, we need you in our schools, our scholars need you. So yes, we, we, we have to make, we are making a stronger push because that is a great area of need with our bus drivers, with our power professionals, with our substitutes. Um, we are beginning to see that there's a bit of a gap there that we definitely need to, to get filled. So first, we were just talking in the commercial break about the difference between scholars and students. And I use the word students a lot. Tell me why you use scholars. Um, it started when I was a teacher and I would uh, have students come into the classroom that were incorrigible. They, some of them did not want to be there. And what I found is that um, I, I was, the students, all you had to do was tap into them, build real strong relationships with them. And what I found is each one had a particular genius within that was untapped. So I, I always challenge myself as a teacher to find that untapped genius. And finally it says they're actually scholars. They're capable of doing phenomenal things. We just have to have that firm belief. And that's what has driven me in my entire career. Our, our students are really scholars that are capable of doing phenomenal things in the educational world. We just need to build those relationships mm -hmm. with them. A way of framing. Mm -hmm. It makes all the difference, it yes. sounds like. Yes. Um, and we actually had a reporter following up on this yesterday. So on Monday, the board consented to an agreement that will pay teachers to develop lesson plans using resources from the 1619 project to explore some racial and social justice issues. Could you give us a little bit of an explanation about what the district is doing with this and what that is, what's happening with that? Yes, certainly. So um, th there was a grant that uh, several teachers uh, applied for and received because we just wanted to review and, and figure out what, what is it. And, and uh, the district had approved it back in the spring. They approved the agreement on Monday night. And it's not about implementing. We're not 
implementing anything. All we're doing is just trying to review and figure it out and learn about this. Our process for implementing a new curriculum or anything like that, it takes several years. It's not a quick process. It, it's very in, intensive. It involves mm -hmm. our parents, the community, or teachers. And, and so right now, all they're doing is they're going out and they're trying to figure out what is 1619. They are reviewing. No plans are being made to take anything to the board. No plans are, current, are being made to, to implement anything. It's just review, learn, figure it out. <laughs> All right, thank you. And now back to COVID-19. Will staff or t students even, or teachers, have any extra sick days or paid time off because of the pandemic? I know there was a big push for that last year because yes. we just were uncertain about the year. What yes. will it look like this year? Yes, well, I'll first start by saying the board was, uh, our school board, the Board of Education was very gracious in granting even additional time off that was, uh, actually um, encouraged mm -hmm. by our, our state agencies. And now we're coming to, to the end of that because we're trying to get our scholars in seat. So we, we need our teachers present in our schools. Now, it does not mean that we are not going to be um, have empathy or work through scenarios where they're extenuating circumstances, but those will be taken on a case-by-case -case mm -hmm. basis. Um, our emphasis is we want our scholars in seats, we want our teachers in our classrooms teaching and, and giving the best that they can. But we also have to understand that, you know, there, there are times there, there that things may happen that we have to be conscientious about because we value our staff. We, we, mm -hmm. we have a phenomenal staff and we want them to be very comfortable in our schools teaching our scholars every day. That's great to hear. Well, unfortunately, this is all the time we have this morning. We do so appreciate you joining us, and we hope to have you again soon. Thank you. Thank you for Thank having you. me.